Can't decide in torn between a romantic, comedy, action, or an indie film to watch for the weekend? Well, well, well. Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast is your ultimate guide to the latest movies. Join us as we dissect the latest on the blockbusters. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast. Welcome to the GSMC Movie Podcast, brought to you by GSMC Podcast Network. I'm your host, Stacey. I'm your co-host, Sarah. And today we're talking more movies about mothers, even well, though it's past by the time mother's you hear day. this, you, it'll be past Mother's Day. Yeah. But it's sort of a bookending of mothers' films, <laughs> and, and the films are somewhat similar in that Breaking In, which is the first film we're going to talk about, definitely rem- reminded me of Kidnap mm-hmm. when I saw the trailer, and I was like, please don't be a kidnap, please. <laughs> please don't be another kidnap. Because if you listen to our last episode, you know I did not care for kidnapping. She did not care for it, no. Mm-mm. Although, thankfully, Breaking In does not have the absolute ridiculous levels of convenience or luck going on here. <laughs> okay, so Kidnap has kidnap starred Halle Berry. Uh, Breaking In stars Gabrielle Union. Mm-hmm. Um, so, okay, set the stage for us. So, in Breaking In, Gabrielle Union's father has recently died, and so she's inherited his house, mm. and she's going there to set it up to be sold. She and her father seem to have had some sort of estranged relationship and didn't really talk and weren't really close. So she feels sort of conflicted about going to this house. And it seems she's grown up in this house, but hasn't been there in years. So she doesn't quite recognize everything about it or the the very fancy security system that it has in it. Okay. But as she, she takes her two kids up for the weekend to help her set up the house to be sold. And there are people who have broken in because they were told that her father somewhere in the house had a safe full of money. Mm. And they want it, and they manage to set up the security system so that it's on, and they're in the house with Gabrielle Union's kids, but she's outside, and so she has to find a way to get in and save her kids. Oh, okay. All right, so kind of the... Well, not exactly the opposite of kid now, no. but, you know, like <laughs> her, her children have been taken in a way, right. and she has to get to them, but... Mm, interesting. I haven't seen it, but it kind of just the the concept made me think of uh, safe safe house, safe room, safe room. I was thinking that too with the Jodie Foster. Yeah, yeah. Except they're in the room, in the and room. she's not in the house right. at all. Yeah, but that was what I was thinking of a lot while I was watching. It's just like this probably was a similar storyline when they first started writing it. Right. Okay. So how did they make that two hours? <laughs> so this movie follows the sort of typical action trope thing of timing doesn't matter Mm, okay because the bad guys gabrielle union is desperate because they've got her kids and she's a mom and so there's that whole thing the bad guys are desperate because they cut not the they cut the power lines or the phone lines they cut some sort of lines which the security company can see so if those lines don't get back on in 90 minutes the security company will send the cops Mm. so they've got 90 minutes even though this film takes more than that and so actually it's an hour and 28 so they have 88 minutes to do it (laughs) very close (laughs) but but of course it starts getting into yeah this 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 whole thing still hasn't it still hasn't been 90 minutes really but also what kind of security rule is that (laughs) i am a top-notch security company so if i have not heard from you in an hour and a half i will then send the then i will call the cops nothing bad happens in the first 88 minutes Mm -mm. (laughs) what okay can i just Mm. take a side tour of the description on imdb for this movie okay a woman fights to protect her family during a home invasion yes not really that interesting (laughs) no does that make you want to watch it they couldn't come up with something better than that well and i i love the uh the poster which is like payback is a mother is a yes yes (laughs) it is like okay Mm -hmm. i still kind of don't know anything about the film but i get that we're supposed to find her to be pretty badass at some point by that 
by that description. This does explain why I saw on Twitter earlier a picture of Gabrielle Union with two children, and it said something about, uh, I don't think it said payback as a mother, but it said something along the lines, and I was like, I don't know what that reference is. Now I do. Yes. <laughs> uh, so she uh, is trying to get in, and there's four bad guys, and they evidently just sort of met in prison and broke out together or something, but they're not like a cohesive group. And they just randomly heard about this guy who died who may or may not have a safe full of money? How did that work? So one of them was supposedly sleeping with the the father's uh, assistant or something. Okay. And so she somehow told them about the safe. But interestingly, and this is why the whole 90 minutes things come up, they don't know where the safe is. <laughs> How like, big of a house is it? I mean, It's a huge... Okay. okay. This house is huge and it's got a really fancy security system where you see these like two different screens with all these different camera angles that constantly switch so it's hard to tell how many rooms are actually in the house and where all the camera angles is but even as we go through the film and they're all running around the different rooms and the kids get locked in one room but then sort of find a way out but then come back i'm like i don't know where almost anybody is 90 percent of the time because we okay. never get like a walk tour through the house. We arrive at the house and then the kids who somehow have never been at this house are immediately like, I'm going to go claim my room, you know, like find whatever. And I'm like, really? aren't they selling the house? They are. Oh, okay. Just they're to just they're claim, claim the room to stay at for the night oh, okay. as they okay. clean it up. Sure. But just like nobody, you've never been to this house. Do you know where everything is? <laughs> like, you know, you're just going to wander around till you find the rooms and the bathrooms and yeah, you're Pretty all much. very comfortable in the house you've never been to because my immediate thought would be there's ghosts in this house or something. <laughs> no, that's a different movie. <laughs> well, I'm not going to wander off and pick my own room by myself in this giant... <laughs> it is a really large house. And since most of the movie ends up taking place at night, it's even harder to tell what's oh, going on. so everything's dark. That's, those, those kinds of movies are hard when it's just everything is so dark. Mm -hmm. I very quickly sort of gave up on trying to figure out where almost anybody was if they weren't like actually interacting with you each other mm -hmm. because we start with gabrielle uh first learns that there are people in the house while she's on the phone ordering a pizza she's in some sort of courtyard drinking a glass of wine and then she notices that one of the garage doors are up okay. but i'm a little confused as to where the garage doors even are <laughs> because when you first pull up to the house you see it from the front and you just see a front door you don't see the garage. So I'm like, I don't know where this is already. And then the kids all get kidnapped at the same time. Someone tries to take her and she realizes, oh my God, there's people here. And I'm already like, I, I don't know where anybody is. So whatever. <laughs> I, I already give up. Like, Interesting. 20 minutes so yeah. So there are the four guys and they not only do they have to deal with, we've got a set time limit and we have no idea where this safe is. And also there's this woman who's kind of messing up our plans because we they didn't actually think anybody was going to be there because she doesn't have a, a relationship with her father. So they don't come to the house. So their info was nobody ever comes to the house. So they're like, this is all sort of plans messed up, but we've already started this. We're going to stay until we find the money. <laughs> so it's it's everyone starts getting like strong levels of I'm almost willing to do it. And there's one of the bad guys who's like psychotic. And you get that sort of very quickly when they're arguing about what they should do. And he, I think, has just killed somebody. Oh, jeez. And it's just like, okay, then. So this is actually, and, and the sort of uh, leader remarks, you know, I told you to make sure she didn't leave. I didn't tell you to kill her. It's like, <laughs> now that you've killed her, Gabrielle Union's character will be desperate. Like, before, she was just scared for her kids and fear I can handle. But now she's desperate. Who knows what she'll do? Right. it's like... Oh my god! And there's there's some sort of jump scares at times because it uh, is uh -huh. it is tense at times because you do have Gabrielle and then later uh, her daughter sort of sneaking around trying not to get caught while also trying to figure out what the heck they're doing. So it's just like I don't know, I don't know if my heart can handle this at times. <laughs> I'm just like, please, please don't be like someone around the oh please don't, oh what are you doing? <laughs> So at least there was a, a little bit of an adrenaline factor. There was, but again, like in the same way where I sort of just gave up on trying to figure out where anybody else is in the house, I mm -hmm. kind of sort of gave up on thinking about whether or not, I kind of just assumed Gabrielle was going to make it, and I kind of assumed the kids were going to make it, and that we weren't going to get, although it's, okay, so the movie starts off with her father going for a run, 
And then and then he dies. He gets <laughs> killed. Oh, he gets killed. Okay. He gets killed. I was going to say, don't run. It'll kill you. And that's not why he... No, no. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, that sort of sets it up, sets a bar for like how violent the movie's going to be. Okay. And it actually gets a bit worse as it goes on. Really? Because it's sort It's of, only PG-13. Is it really bad? It depends on your your comfort level. Okay. So with the the, the father, grandfather, the, the man whose house this is, you only kind of see uh, what happens, but you don't see it fully. Mm-hmm. But then later you do see things more fully of the way people die. Although not the ones with blood. So long as there are bloodless stuff, you can see it fine. But then the blood kind of just gets... You don't see it happen, but then you later see people with blood on them. But there's a couple of people who, like, fall mm-hmm. and uh, hit their heads or break their necks. And it's just like, oh, oh, okay. Bye. How many people How many people die in this movie? I won't say that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it, more than one, less than 50. Y- yes. There, there are less than 50 people in the movie total. So, so we're not giving less anything than 50. away. But uh, there's a moment where uh, Gabrielle has first sort of gotten into a position where she's safe for the moment, but they have her kids. And this is just near the beginning where we're just figuring out what's going on. She calls the house through the intercom to talk to whoever Mm -hmm. she talks to the main guy. And then she's like, I want to talk to my kids to make sure they're okay. The main guy without moving an inch away from the intercom waves her daughter over and then whispers to her you know don't say anything your life is on the line and somehow is not heard like whispering right next to the intercom intercom. okay but then he steps like three feet away three feet away after the daughter's done talking and he still talks at a normal thing and can be heard just fine (laughs) just like (laughs) no what (laughs) why you couldn't hear and then later she uh, manages to find her daughter um, but the other people are searching through the house because I guess they know she's in the house now. And she and her daughter have this like long whispered almost argument because she wants her daughter to do something and her daughter's too scared to. And I'm just like, how do they not hear you? <laughs> like, I know you're whispering, but they are actively looking for you. So they should have like their ears completely open. Just nobody hears whispers evidently in this film. We hear everything else, but we can't hear whispers. It's just like, what? <laughs> I... Uh, that's what? because they're whispers that's you know that's the point of whispering <laughs> it's like the movie version of stage whispers but in reverse or something it's just uh, like i just okay don't know where anybody is in the house and uh whispers don't do anything okay moving on continue okay. and yeah so <laughs> all right so yes or no did you did you completely hate it was there anything redemptive in it that you thought was okay didn't completely hate it i uh i thought gabrielle union actually did a pretty good job because, and this was sort of my fear with Kidnap, was I didn't want them to make Halle Berry some sort of, like, taken super mm-hmm. secret spy. Mm-hmm. And they do, they, it's the same with Gabrielle. She's not any sort of super secret spy. We don't even know what she does, I don't think. Okay. I'm not sure it's ever mentioned what she does for a career. Mm-hmm. Her husband somehow works in an office and can't come for the weekend. But she is just whatever. So at first, when she's first dealing with the bad guys... She's she's literally doing it, you know, fly by the seat of her pants. She doesn't know what she's doing. When she first encounters the first bad guy and they have a fight, there's like screaming and yelling and she doesn't come off great. And she kind of only manages to escape, not quite by luck, but by luck plus basic physical ability. Okay. So it's not like she's super awesome and, you know, turning the bad guys on them, their heads. But then later you do see her come up with some really good plans and you know, sort of make it through to, to get into the house to try and save her kids. So you, it's a, it's a believable progression from, I have no idea what I'm doing to, I am desperate enough. I have to figure this out. Mm -hmm. So I I thought it was, well, I actually, I took my mother and my grandmother to see this film um, because I knew my mom wanted to see it. And usually things my mother likes, my grandmother also kind of likes. Okay. So I was like, okay, let's just all go. Um, And then I later (laughs) apologized to my grandmother because I was like, I didn't know it was going to be that violent. (laughs) She's like, no, it's fine. I was like, I was a little, hmm, okay. Okay, so um, one quick question Mm. is, why didn't Gabrielle Union call the police? Uh, Because they have her kids. Okay, I mean, yeah, okay. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, that's always the... That's always the... Call the police and we'll kill whichever loved person of yours we have. Right. Which is why that tends to actually happen. Even yeah. though, you know, calling the police, but whatever. But I, I mean, they're in the house, and this house is 
I still feel like I might call the police. <laughs> Just because well, this house, I don't know. <laughs> this house is sort of like, again, I haven't seen safe room, but this house sort of feels like the safe room house. It's kind of impenetrable once mm. the security system's on. Oh, okay. Like when Gabrielle first realizes there are people in the house, uh, she manages to get away from the person who's trying to uh, stop her for a moment and sees her kids through a window and sees that someone has her kids and she tells them to back up and she tries to break in the window with a chair and nothing happens. Okay. Because the house just, it, it, her father clearly knew that people were kind of after him. So he had this house set For up. For vague amount of money. Well, it may a, or may not be in a safe. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that to me feels a little forced on the plot, but that's okay. Well, and the bad guys say that he, and it, her husband mentions it in one of the phone calls that he was under investigation by the DA for something so, okay like the whole backstory of gabrielle is really not explained she doesn't talk to her father because he supposedly blamed her for her mother's death mm. and he's the criminal he's the one being investigated by the da not you and that's like all we get <laughs> that's all we know about anything beyond gabrielle and her kids okay is that's her whole backstory father blames her for mother and is under investigation for da and has evidently like liquidated all his assets so we really do believe the cash must be somewhere because he was probably preparing to run or something so yeah i thought it was a uh, a good film better than kidnap definitely okay what did um, your grandma think she liked it okay i don't know if she'd tell me if she didn't like it too <laughs> Aww, much. grandma uh i know my mother really liked it and the audience uh that was there when i saw it also really liked it there was one point involving a truck that we all were i i half expected them to sort of break out into applause um, because of that moment we've all kind of been waiting for for that character mm -hmm. but then they didn't and we continued on and then yeah still still had characters to deal with but yeah overall i thought it was pretty good for its for its type of movie right like okay. it's not any sort of these types of movies generally aren't you know yeah oscar they, material yeah, they or, don't generally have you know like amazingly written pro plots so you go in kind of yeah. expecting some of these like things. if this came on tv again i, I did, wouldn't necessarily turn the channel okay so <laughs> that's that's a glowing Dating with faint praise right there but <laughs> I mean, so yeah we're gonna take a short break stay tuned you're listening to the gsmc movie podcast Watching TV has changed over time. Streaming has become the new norm. That's why Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast dives headfirst to the world of cord cutting. Want to be on the loop of what's hot in Netflix? Or if it's not a preference, what about original shows in Hulu? We've got you covered. Join us as we fill in the blanks and talk about movies to stream and what show you should be binging. This is the Golden State Media Concepts Television Podcast. Welcome back to the GSMC Movie Podcast. Our second movie, I went into thinking it would also be sort of mother fighting for her kid because I had seen uh, the fourth one, and that movie is uh, Underworld Blood Wars, which is somehow the fifth in the Underworld series. I, I think I've only seen the first two. I didn't realize they'd already gone to... I mean, I knew there was more that I hadn't seen, but this is the fifth. Wow. Yeah. So I saw... I saw the first one and I didn't love it the way everyone else loved it, but I, I thought it was, I was like, okay, fine. And I was interested enough to go actually see the second one when it um, came out in theaters because I wanted to see what happened now with Christine and Michael and the blood they shared and mm -hmm. how that was going to play out. Right. And I was like, mm, okay with that one. And then the third one, I get why they play that because the third one is actually a prequel. It doesn't have Celine in right. it at all. It's right. about Victor's daughter. That's, Celine right. looked like and they actually do kind of look like the actor they got to play her in the third one not the actor they got to play her in the first one because they didn't look like at all but then i was like okay so fine i get why you want to tell that story since it started the whole war okay cool we're good and then the fourth one came out and it was just like 
why (laughs) wait who why did we come back to this we had kind of told the story we didn't need to come back and now you've added this crazy thing about her having a kid and being somehow kept in hibernation for what (laughs) okay so yeah it's got one of those kind of plots yeah the fourth one really started changing things around and the fifth one is more so a sequel to the fourth one than anything else and since the fourth one took they're supposed to be like several and or many years between the fourth one and the fourth second one it's not clear how long it's been but the general human population does in the fourth one sort of know about vampires and lichens oh okay. so it's been long enough that like that's happened i think laws have been passed about that and so it's like oh and she has a kid who seems to be somewhere between like 12 and 14 and it's just like um okay (laughs) but so like the fourth one was her trying to protect her kid who she kind of doesn't seem to know is her kid at first so in this fifth one and i kind of knew this from the trailers both the vampires and the lichens want her kid her daughter whose name is eve because eve has hybrid blood and so if they can have the hybrid blood that would give them like an edge in this war between vampires and lichens so is she hybrid between vampire and lichen well, or is it a different kind of hybrid? Well, because she's the child of Selene and Michael. Do you remember? See, I don't even the remember who one. Michael is. Is he? <laughs> um, <laughs> that's that's how terrible I am. It's been a while. So Michael was the guy in the first one who's believed to be a direct descendant of Corvinus, who was the person whose sons one became the first vampire and one became the first werewolf, and then the third son just was immortal and went on and had offspring. Michael's supposed to be one of those offspring, so his blood can go either way and so if a vampire or lichen can get his sort of untainted blood then they're not bound by their whatever weaknesses along with their species like lichens don't do silver and vampires don't do sunlight so if they get the other blood they wouldn't have those weaknesses i guess and so that's why the lichens are hunting michael in the first one and celine's supposed to kill him and ends up saving him and then and, okay, here's the terrible hmm. thing about me is that I know I watched this movie. <laughs> I remembered that it was um, dark and, you know, kind right. of oddly lit because everything yep. sort of had that silver cast to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a lot of lycra. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah. That's pretty much what, you know, vampires, lichens, and lycra would be. <laughs> and that's one of my complaints more so than, A, we didn't need movies really three, four, and five. But also, even if we're going through all these movies, her outfit never changes. <laughs> She's yeah. always got the long sleeve, like bodysuit with the leather corset, because that's totally what the like most badass vamp- uh, lichen fighter would wear. Well, sure, because it's so comfortable corset. and you can move around in it so <laughs> exactly. well, much it's, like the Amazons in exactly, Wonder Woman. Exactly. Yes, I, I clearly need to get on that because I don't move well, so I clearly need the tight <laughs> leather corset yes. to do so. Uh, that's probably your problem. <sighs> yes, you're not wearing the right clothes. You're wearing loose fitting, <laughs> comfortable right. clothes. Clothes I can move in. Yeah. What, what was I thinking? Uh, you weren't. Yeah. So uh, in this movie everyone's hunting for eve and they want celine because they think celine knows where eve is but celine and eve have sort of made a pact where eve has gone off on her own and asked celine not to look for her because there's this whole thing and it was explored in pretty much all the movies that if a vampire drinks someone's blood they can sort of like see their memories right i do vaguely remember that okay so if someone can get celine's blood they can they think they can find eve um, and there's more, they, they, because they are continuing past where they should, they have to introduce a whole, like, nether set of, a whole nether coven, even though we totally destroyed the coven. <laughs> this is a different coven. This is a different aspect sure. of, whatever. Right. Let's okay. go with it. Um, I didn't even know vampires had covens. Thought that was witches. I, I don't, I don't know. Uh, so. I mean, who am I? You know, it's not like I'm a vampire and I know these things. Right. So Celine was supposed to, her, this coven originally signed her death warrant but then invites her in because she's like the best lichen killer and they feel they're losing the war with the lichens because the lichens have a new leader marius who is also hunting for eve and so celine has to deal with okay both the vampires want her and the lichens want her and i'm not sure who i can trust and yeah it goes from there it's is eve even in this movie because i can't find her in the credits I won't spoil that. Okay. All right. Because um, there's cello vampire number one through four, but I can't find Eve. <laughs> oh <my gosh>. <laughs> <laughs> well, Celine, most of the time is uh, running around with David. And it took me a while to uh, figure out where I knew David from. Cause I, divergent movies. Yeah. Yeah. 
on. I heard that it's Virgin. I was like, what? Oh, no, yeah. He's from the Divergent movie. He's four. And I was just like, I know I've seen you. And it's not just the number four, even though I know you were in the fourth Underworld film. But what are you from? What? And there's a whole thing with him regarding his father, which, again, I feel they're just sort of making up the rules as they go because you can have ch- children as a vampire. When I, you have children before you're a vampire, fine. But say for Celine, who's got the special blood, vampires can have children? Right. That, These uh, immortal things can have... What? That, that seems to go against... Again, I'm not a vampire, but right? and, you know everything that, I've, everything that I've read, which clearly is fact because yes. I've read it in a book. And huh. so at one point, Celine and David head to this northern coven because, again, there's evidently multiple covens that we just didn't bother to talk about sure. in the first two films whatever uh this northern coven where everybody is blonde for some reason because um, it's the north <laughs> i don't sure I'm, sure i mean it was never clear where any of the underworld movies were taking place exactly like they're speaking english in the american films but the locations they're in seem to be um foreign and the coven that they're heading to is called Vardor or something Mm -hmm. so I don't know where we are but uh, as they get there David finds out something about his family and Celine has a face off with Marius and then something happens with her and then they finally get to the like sort of last major battle between the wolves and lichens and based off of that like I'm not quite sure how the lichens didn't ever win this battle (laughs) Because they do pretty well in this battle, and they have a new weapon that I'm just like, yeah, that makes the vampire's weakness is kind of worse than the lichen's weakness. So, how have you not just killed all the vampires <laughs> easily before this? Mm-hmm. Just yeah. Mm-hmm. And there's a, a woman in here, Samira, who's kind of got her own plans for things that the rest of the coven doesn't know about. So we've got like multiple villains we're dealing with. Sure. Regarding, yeah, I was again. I didn't think that even, I can see why they made the second, because this was evidently a pretty big hit, and you could actually get Scott Speedman back at that point, why you made the fourth when he decided not to come back. Right. I'm not quite sure, because it's not like, I don't think Kate, it's not like Kate Beckinsale needs these movies for her career, so right. maybe we, she really likes playing the character. I'm not maybe sure. Maybe she likes that leather corset. I'm sure she can do ever leather corset <laughs> movies. movies. She's British. <laughs> Like, I it's don't not- know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> like, just that British people are more likely to end up in historical period that pieces, would have but leather corsets. Why would they have leather corsets? Well, leather corsets, <laughs> you know, like in Wonder Woman, where the corset is the woman's body armor. Right, okay. If you really want a corset. Okay, all right, I'll 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 let you have that. Because, again, it's not clear why she even needs the corset in any of these films. You are wearing a like whole like a bodysuit. You're covered. You're good. That corset's on the outside. Like, yeah, well, the, and corsets should never be on the outside. I'm sorry. I, yeah. Not that I want to wear a corset in the first place because, you know, it squashes all your internal organs. Not good for right. you. But uh, on the outside, hello. Yeah. So there's a lot going on in this movie. And yet, sadly, not really too much with the mother thing because... Eve went off and made her promise not to look for her. And she kept that promise to keep her safe. So they're separated and it's it's her and David most of the time. And there's some strange thing going on with her and David where, and I even thought this in the last film, that there was sort of like a feelings for him sort of thing. Mm-hmm. But then she still really feels for Michael, even though we haven't seen Michael in who knows how many years. Right. And then later at the end of the film, David starts to seem to feel something for one of the people from the blonde coven. (laughs) And it's just like, I don't, what's going on? And please don't make another one. (laughs) Just like more so than anything else. Just stop. Just don't, don't touch it. Leave it alone. And, and I think, again, I'm not sure why they made the fourth one, especially this one, because the director for this is not the director for the originals. The originals. The originals. The original, I'll say. (laughs) So it's not clear. Again, I'm not sure why Kate uh, Beckinsale chose to make this, but it's not clear why they made this film at all, period. How's it doing? Have you, you, I mean, well, it's already out on DVD. So, okay. So, how did it do? I guess I should have said. I'm not quite sure, actually. Because I remember I knew that it was coming out, but I, at that point, wasn't even sure which number it was. And I was just like, eh, not interested because I didn't really like number four so i was just like oh whatever and then i didn't pay attention so okay 
Well, critics yeah. on Rotten Tomato only gave it a 21%. Audience was split down the middle, half, 50%. Yeah, I, I lean somewhere between 21 and 50. <laughs> okay. I'll say about uh, maybe somewhere in the low 30s. Just- box, box office, 30 million. So not that great. Yeah. It's just, it's not that great a movie. And it's it's rather diverged from the first one. So, like, even the things that made the first one pretty interesting by now, it's like, well, we've kind of killed everyone we were dealing with in that one already. So we have to right. cre- keep creating problems in order to, for these stories to go. And it's just like, just stop. <laughs> just, <laughs> just, just find something else. Just, and please, I beg of you, please don't make another one. And just, you, I, you can't. And it's very clear at this point that Scott Speedman, who played Michael, is just like not interested at all right. to do these films. <laughs> He's like ever you. No, again. thank you. I'm so good. it's just like, just please leave this alone. Please stop. Please don't. Please, 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 please don't do another one. All right. Good to know. And on that begging note, we're going to end for today. Thank you for listening to the GSMC Movie Podcast. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Movie Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network, from movies to music from sports to entertainment and even weird news you can also follow us on twitter and on facebook thank you and we hope you have enjoyed today's program